One of the essential skills for writing a technical report or a formal paper is to be able to create complex equations like the ones shown here and then present them in the proper format for a paper. We're going to use the equation editor to do that. This particular equation is Bernoulli's equation for fluid flow through an orifice plate. I won't take time to discuss what this is applied for. We want to simply be able to create it. So to begin with, make sure your cursor is in the line where you want to have the equation displayed. Click the Insert tab, and to the far right in the Symbols group, click the List Arrow Opposite Equation. Now there are some pre-drawn equations that you could use, but we're going to have to create our own, so choose Insert New Equation. By default, Word puts the cursor into the middle of the screen. We'll talk about justification in a little bit. So all you need to do is begin typing. Capital Q. Now you don't need to put any spaces in between the characters. Word applies that for you. So just Q and then equals capital C. Anytime you have a subscript or a superscript, you'll find it's better not to try typing it in, but add them in later. So I'll explain that. Let's carry on with this. I want the times symbol next and then capital A. Next, I want the root symbol, and here it is right here, or radical symbol, first one. In the placeholder, under the radical sign, notice I have a quotient on top of another quotient. So let's choose the quotient, or as Word calls it, the fraction placeholder tool. And in the numerator, I'll create a second fraction, or a quotient placeholder setup. We'll work with this for now. In the numerator of the numerators, this will be 2 times. I need the capital D, capital delta in Greek. There it is, delta. And then that's rho. Rho is the Greek symbol R. So we use it for mass density. Times G, the gravitational constant, times H, that's the height of liquid in the system, it's the pressure, divided by rho again, this is the density of the fluid. And now the denominator of the quotient, let's see, I need a bracket here. There's my bracket symbol, like so. Within the symbol, I need another quotient, and that'll be d2 over d1 using the right arrow key to move the cursor to the right of my quotient. Now I want minus 1. So I've laid out the basic equation. Now I need to put in my superscripts and subscripts. So select the letter C, the cursor, and use the shift arrow key, but you can do it simply by dragging with your cursor. You want to use this script tool. In the case of C, we want the subscript, so it creates a placeholder for you to type in the letter D. Same procedure for the subscript 2 on the A. Here's the subscript and 2. Quotient in the denominator of the quotient. Another subscript. That's D2, diameter of the throat in the orifice plate, divided by D1. So 1 is a subscript. Now notice in my equation that this d2 over d1 is raised to the fourth power. So I need to select all of that and then use the script tool again. This time I want a superscript, fourth power. So there it is. That's Bernoulli's equation. A little bit tedious, but it works. Next thing we want to do is justify this properly. And again, the equation should be center justified and we need to have the equation number recorded in a formal paper, and that needs to be right justified. Well, I'm going to hit Control L to begin with. Control L means left justify, and while I'm mentioning these, Control E is center justify, Control R is right justify. The Control R for right and Control L for left are easy to remember, and Control E is easy, I think, of the word even or equal justification. I want to first move this to the left. You'll see why. Control L brings it to the left. Now I'm going to have to put in a center tab stop 
center justified tab stop at the midpoint of my sheet. So on here in the tab button on the far left of the ruler, it shows you the type of tab stop that is created. And as you click on it repeatedly, you scroll through the various options. So the default is a left justified tab stop. We want a center justified tab stop, and that's the next one right there. I want to click our cursor in the center. Now this being an eight and a half inch wide sheet of paper, I'm using one inch margins. It means that I have a grand total of six and a half inches of workspace. The center of six and a half will be three and a quarter. So if I click there, I have center justified a tab stop. Now you need to bring your cursor to the left hand side. You can use the home key a couple of times or you could just click with your cursor. And when you hit the tab key on the keyboard, it center justifies this item. Next, we want to have the equation right justified. So to do that, I'm going to need a right justified tab stop. There it is. Uh, remember that your cursor has to be in the same line where you're going to do this. Click on the ruler. I'm going to drag it to the very end and release it. And now uh, I'm bring my cursor to the right-hand side of my equation. I don't want the equation to be right justified. I want the equation number. So click the tab stop. It moves me to the right-hand side. I type EQN space 1. And there it is, a center justified complex equation with a right justified equation number done handily in the equation editor.